Dallas, Texas. Here was a city that just felt brand spanking new. Paris and New York and London and, and then you, during the 80s, you had Dallas. And they were like, what the fuck are you talking about? Where the fuck is Dallas? And that set the stage for this club, the Stark Club. Jeez, man, I've never seen anything like this. This is like a museum or something. But I knew this was completely unique to anything I'd ever seen before. I would call Philippe Stark a modern surrealist big, crazy-looking elephant doors like you'd see on a stage, maybe. Had an otherworldly kind of feel. The three-legged chairs that people always fell out of. The classic Philip Stark chair, the Miss Dorn chair. He's a visionary. Look at these floors. What is this material? In many, many ways, what he's trying to get people to do is to wake up and open up and look at the world around them in a very different way. The sunken dance floor and the, the screens with the light panels and the amplifiers right there and the big Stark logo right in the middle of everything. Two sets of draperies that are tied back give a sense of drama. Hmm, what's behind the, the drapes? I'm descending into the debauchery. <laughs> Sexuality was on fire back then. Philip Stark really likes to play with a play of sexuality. It was before HIV. It was basically a new sexual revolution. Going. An object of desire, a play of sensuality. It was pretty easy to jump in bed with a hot woman. There are references to phalluses. I would see the weirdest shit sometimes, man. There are references to sex and space. I saw this guy and this girl just banging away. Very much a revolutionary approach to get people to wake up. And his girlfriend was just blowing him like no tomorrow. Right there on the floor, man. They didn't look at me like, oh, we're busted. They just looked at me like and paused for a moment and then they got back to having actual sexual intercourse. Ecstasy was legal in the beginning. They would sell the drug right over the bar. This drug made you happy. It didn't have the connotation that it has now. It's about pleasure. This drug gave you a whole new outlook on the evening. It's dark. You know, everything flowed, everybody flowed. There, was, there were no borders. The coke and the alcohol did destroy a lot of people, I think, you know? It was not a secret that the Stark Club was full of drugs. They had a no dance period. I think it was the DEA or possibly the FBI. I mean, the bus was a huge bus. There was enough pills on the floor to fit a third world country, you know? The penalty that it was enforced to the club was that you could not dance. So you could be there, you can have it a good time, but if you move, the, the no, no dance police will come and say, sir, you're arrested. I'm like, what more is the for? Because you're dancing. We were warriors of the discotheque. The first thing I did notice about Star Club 2 is the music was like nothing anyone had ever heard. You know, it was very unique, you know, it had a, a great sound. House music, techno, hip hop. It was basically Euro techno in 1985. It was also referred to, I think, at the time as the second European invasion. Adam and Boy George. Thompson Twins. Joy Arias came all the time. Dead or Alive, Book of Love, There I Am, The Bartender. Wow. This is Robert Plant from Led Zeppelin. So, sure enough, there's Paul Stanley from Kiss downstairs dancing to Madam Butterfly. Grace Jones was the shit. She had this big spinning black leather chair, and she did the entire show sitting in the chair. And a lot of the shows she did with her back turned to the crowd. The consensus was it sucked. So one time she grabbed a girl and started to beat the shit out of her. She literally is grabbing this girl and slapping her. And everybody said, oh my God, we're in so much trouble. Mantronics, that was a show. I think the Chili Peppers played there. Kid Creole and the Coconut. I saw RuPaul. Karen Finley was a performance artist out of New York. But she used to come over and put jams at her pussy. And she was the most mild-spoken educated woman. And then bam, off with the clothes, out with the tits, on with the granny panties on stage talking about pussy. And jamming and stuffing candy jams up her ass. But that was part of her performing art, you know? She's really, really incredible. I remember there was a doorman there and Samuel was wearing a really nice looking vintage zoot suit, as well as he was wearing a beekeeper's hat. These are the days of Boys wearing pearls and big jackets with big padded shoulders, you know, doing a 15th century with collars. And you're like, what the fuck is going on? The scene of the club was almost controlled by, if you will, the gay mafia, the hairdressers, the designers. The hairdresser posse, oh my god. The fucking hairdressers. How many 
hairdressers were there in Dallas, in Star Club, that were just hot. I mean, the hairdressers were like stars. You couldn't go anywhere without where's your hairdresser, who's your hairdresser. You know, if, you, if you're able to bring the best of a city together at this right time with the right mix of music, people, and atmospheres, you basically have a club that makes it like the Star Club.